as emotional as you can be. So like, have your hand reaching for it, and then like, be like shocked, like you're, yeah. Now act a little surprised. Like, be like really shot with your mouth open. <laughs> also, if, if what we had to film was scripted, you know, because what we do is not scripted, so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. If what we did was scripted, holy sh**, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Mr. Beast just destroyed his credibility if this is true. Did release Mr. a statement Beast basically disavowing every single regarding thing regarding his stream or several. <laughs> All right, welcome back, ladies and ladies with dicks. My last video that was about one, Chris Kitty Titty Love and Tyson being outed for being a minor refiner by having many alleged inappropriate conversations with underage people, purchasing and supporting a lollipop artist that he bought art from, fully knowing the history behind the creator Shadman that uses real children as inspiration for this monstrosity of an art style, having somehow over 500,000 Discord messages leaked. I mean, that shit has to be bigger than the Pentagon breach of just Chris and his friends having disgusting interactions with minors in his private server that includes sharing hub pics and videos and more information that you probably already know of and if you don't subscribe anyways my birthday is probably we today when this care. is posted listen all i'm saying is 300k would be a pretty sick gift so how does any of this tie directly to mr beast at all well apparently in the chat logs that's longer than harry potter and the order of phoenix with a cvs receipt attached to it there's certain messages proving mr beast allegedly being in the server during the time chris was openly sharing pieces of literature to children not only that but he was also quite active as well interacting with Chris on multiple occasions now before any messages are shown at all here's the proof that Mr. Beast was part of it there's this website that you can kind of treat like a white pages for discord that showed everyone's discord user ID which is something that you can never change when you pop his account up apparently an entire new name appears making it look like a desperate attempt to cover up Mr. Beast's involvement but whoever is on his damn PR team is probably getting put in a jigsaw trap okay. by Jimmy because they forgot to remove the official links from the account that includes his gaming server and own YouTube channels which is something that you cannot do on discord unless you're the owner of everything that's being linked you can see whenever his account gets clicked on both of his channels pop up and after this guy's nasa speed internet finally loads the damn link it's no other than the beast man himself that shows up also it appears he left during 2020 which is around the time the server started being ran by other people so overall it looks like a piss poor attempt to keep his name out of the limelight for this situation now the conversation that mr beast allegedly took part in wasn't absolutely vile matter of fact it was a flattering remark so here they start praising the penis of Chris Tyson like his boner rising is the equivalent of Jesus rising on Easter morning. But Mr. Beast would chime in to compliment Chris's beef pole, replying, No, I know his wiener size and it's huge. I'll deep throat Chris's pinky dinky. Then Chris says, Mr. Beast joins in the comment on my blue vein yogurt pump. I love it. The main issue many people, including myself, have with all this wasn't the conversation itself. It's where it took place again, being in that server that was swarming with kids when everybody else I mentioned were well into their 20s. Imagine being a young fan excited beyond belief to get a chance to talk to your YouTube idol and the first thing you open up with is seeing everybody doing dick derivatives on each other. You know, it's an incredibly irresponsible look to carelessly have these adult conversations, fully knowing there's people that shouldn't be nowhere near those kind of subjects, are currently sitting there drinking apple juice out of their sippy cups watching the entire convo unfold. Things would start to get worse for Mr. Beast once the internet decided to really start reading in between the lines of his initial statement towards firing Chris, where some pretty noticeable flaws started to get pointed out, and Mr. Mr. Beast's statement, he portrayed himself being absolutely bewildered by the accusations against Tyson that it left him in a state of shell shock, basically acting like he found out about all this yesterday, right? Well, if he was in the server where Chris and others openly passed around booby movies publicly, sexually roleplayed with other members of the server, then claims that it's the miner's fault for joining the server and he shouldn't be the one to have any responsibility to regulate the NSFW stuff he most of the time puts in it. Nevertheless, Mr. Beast was a part of that server, making it very possible that he completely lied about recently finding out about Chris's degeneracy when he was proven to be active in the server since 2019. Plus, there's literally that one video where Mr. Beast is staring at the Shadman drawing Chris had like he just watched Da Vinci hang up the Mona Lisa on his f***ing wall. So it makes it really seem like he never cared or didn't feel the need to see it as a problem until it went public and started to become a personal threat to his image. Well, that's a pretty big fender bender to come back from. However, the YouTuber and former Mr. Beast employee, Dogpack404, decided to total his career, sideswiping that shit into a ditch by releasing an hour long content cop on Mr. Beast, exposing him for faking his own challenges, taking a part of dozens of illegal lotteries, rigging competitions so certain contestants are already pre-planned to win and lose, promoting gambling to children, forging signatures promising the shirts he was selling were signed by him, but were actually just his other crew members forging in, unsafe conditions for participants leading even some reportedly having seizures on the set because they were denied medication, and an assortment of other things. Dogpack starts his video out with the MLG montage of certain examples he's found over the years 
videos of Mr. Beast digitally enhancing his videos using CGI, editing timers used in his vids to make it seem like the contestants are fighting down to the last second to finish the challenge, when in reality it's all scripted and manipulated by Mr. Beast to happen, which you know does go against his entire ideology of being this pure shaved tainted saint that would never fake his videos. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, sure, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, and that's your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker, it's just a guy. This whole room is fake, this contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Bean. They had him dive through this fake door twice, this line is scripted, this action is scripted. In fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. Now, of course, this doesn't invalidate any points coming up, but to me, this is sort of a wet queef in a windstorm. I'm sure many could already guess people finishing last second or constantly having these high stakes happening throughout every single video he posted has to be scripted or altered in some way, because having that happen all the time is so unrealistic. I'm sure if some tweaker ran through the course in 30 seconds, it would put Mr. Beast out of a video because there wouldn't be much content to make out of it. Same can be said about a person that quits the challenge after room one, so it makes sense why he would change some things around to make the videos more interesting. However, the the problem with all that is Mr. Beast always claims they're real, along with portraying these people in these videos as random civilians he found on the side of the street that would have their life completely changed by winning the prize money he's offering them. Well, the one particular contestant that Dog Pack was constantly showing throughout that first clip that goes by the name of Mac turns out to actually be an employee for Mr. Beast that moved from across the country to the same state Mr. Beast stays at months before he ever made an appearance onto the channel. You know, if he got a hotel a few days before the challenge, that I can get behind. Let the motherfucker gather his bearings. But no, this is a permanent move he made months before, and it's not even like Mac was chilling at a Holiday Inn or some hick-ass hostel in the back of the boonies. Now he moved into a million dollar mansion that has more bathrooms than the Sears Tower, and its very own built-in movie theater. Therefore, all this really gives the impression that every video Mac is featured in, with the narrative of him being this fearless warrior that will do anything to get the money, is just entirely fabricated and staged, because he's camera trained. I mean, this is the same guy that's best friends with Arak, the YouTuber Mr. Beast endorsed that also got exposed for faking content, and he's not broke, so this entire never faking vids philosophy is just thrown out the window. I found public records showing that Mac moved from California to Greenville, North Carolina, where Jimmy is located, back in August 2023, two months before he appeared as a contestant. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, this is around the time when Mac started working full-time on the editing team at Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million dollar mansion. His 6,000 square foot million dollar mansion comes with a movie theater and seven bathrooms. What are you going to spend the $800,000 on? I mean, my life's changed now. Mac would be far from the only insider though, because the next point Dog Pack would absolutely pack Beast with is lying about the so-called random subscribers that he invites for his videos. Many of the faces that fill the crowd in his vids are familiar ones to him, whether it be his own employees, the friends of those employees, hell, even the grandma of one, are hand-selected by the Beast team to not only feature in them, but also potentially rigged to win some of them as well, which is a big giant one-two fuck you combo to the actual participants there that were random invited. I mean, it's not like he's ever rigged the results of a challenge. That would be impossible because he films with hundreds of random subscribers, right? Wrong. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, that contestant had to get out for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees or just the employees themselves. Dog Pack claims everybody here is a paid actor, but I would like to believe there's some real subscribers in these videos that had their times and hopes of winning utterly wasted because they were destined just to lose from the start. So imagine reacting to this at home on your stained up couch and collapsed ceiling, realizing you never even had a chance to begin with. You would probably be livid. They're gonna have his next video be testing $1 versus $1 million lawyer out because this has the bend or break some sort of law to deceive people this hard. Even worse is that the results of this video were completely scripted. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, it would have been a PR problem if the boys had won by a lot. And because so many of the female contestants were Mr. Beast employees who got out immediately, production stepped in to actually make the results of the challenge closer. Uh, you can actually see some of this happen on camera, like when Jimmy pays one of the boys $10,000 to leave, which is 
twice as much as the actual prize money. There's another example of grown adults beefing over hide and seek, as crazy as that sounds, being the popular YouTuber Rosanna Pancito going against Mr. Beast for falsifying the results of the crater hide and seek video. She claims that she got third in the challenge but was edited out to perform worse, calls out Logan Paul for being in the top three in the vid despite in the actual game placing fifth, Quackity being replaced in second by some dude that was sleeping, and the winner Zach King breaking the rule of the one place you can't hide in the challenge being the ceiling. You said, hey Jimmy, my intention of speaking up is not to be malicious or create drama, but I was really hurt by the editing decision you made. Editing me out of the top three and making me look like I, pre I performed worse than I did felt awful. Quackity was also edited out of the top three. Oh wait, Quackity- Wait, he talked about it? Whoa. Yes, he- so not he talked about it? That's what I was also shocked by. So I was, I was in, I ended up being in third place. I ended up being in third place because they found me, but Lorray was in that video and Lorray was asleep. So I was technically second place. So I was, I was the second place. Quackity was also edited out of the top three. And he also talked about it. I've stayed silent for so long. It's causing me mental stress and anguish. It's not mentally healthy for me to have someone make me look worse than I am to millions of people. I would never do that to a fellow creator. He said, obviously, I wasn't trying to make you look bad. Just give me a time we can chat. I'm not mad or anything. Just want to help. He responded, why did you lie? Why did you say in the video that you found Logan Paul literally one minute before Zach? I outlasted Logan and was proud of what I accomplished. It actually built some confidence in myself that wasn't there before. He says, I don't know. It's been a while. Let's call and figure That's it out. That's wild. That's wild. The internet initially dragged Rosanna through the damn mud, hurling insults at her left and right. She was this wicked witch that was lying to take Mr. Beast down, but with all the information out now, I really think she was telling the truth about all of it. Boo hoo and womp womp. Who gives a slobby clit of a shit? Well, I think there's some concern consideration into wondering why Quackity, the technical winner, wasn't able to get the $1 million charity prize, or just why anything had to be staged in general, because again, this whole my vids are real notion is getting crucified, because now he's apparently faking things as simple as a game of hide and seek. That's just the tip of the iceberg, though. The next thing Dogpack would expose is Mr. Beast faking his own challenges that he's a part of, like spending seven days at sea where he would act like he's fighting the waves throughout the night, struggling to fall asleep, even though off camera he's counting off sheep sleeping good in the production yacht. Okay, we know Mr. Beast faked one of his challenges. Big deal. Well, what about the ones we don't? I mean, this man has 24 different 24-hour videos of himself being in bizarre places. I spent 24 hours in a doomsday bunker. This motherfucker could have just walked out. I spent 24 hours in prison. This dude could have just walked out. I spent 24 hours buried alive. This dude could have got assistance from his friends and crew to get dug up with heavy machinery and then walked out. Like, if what Dog Pack showed is true, there's no telling what other videos Mr. Beast could have possibly faked. He would also cover how Mr. Beast's stage content could possibly bring up some legal troubles using the 10 minute real time video as an example of controlling certain obstacles remotely instead of having the person completing it himself. For courses like this with money on the line, there's always somebody that's supposed to monitor everything to make sure the entire contest is fair. But Mr. Beast doesn't have one of those. When he reaches the bottom floor, he has to turn these water valves. Now you can tell that these valves aren't actually connected to anything because the water flows out in an instant and it happens when he's not even touching the valve. The contestant also goes back to the first valve unaware that anything had happened and he's still able to spin it. So the valve seems to spin freely and isn't actually connected to the flow of water. So you could assume that producers might be off camera with remote switches to trigger the flow of water. And assuming they've tested this, the producers might know how long it takes for the water to clear out of the room, so they could sort of decide on the fly how many turns of the valve it takes or just when to trigger the water in general to make the results close. And in traditional media, this kind of rigging is actually completely illegal. On any kind of a game show where there is a prize, you have to have somebody that ensures that it's fair. They are out there essentially to make sure that we don't do something that would favor one player or one tribe. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. Next would be what I find much more scummy than just faking videos, is Mr. Beast supposedly hosting many illegal lotteries to his young impressionable fan base. Dog Pack would expose exactly how he would do this by pulling up his merch streams where Mr. Beast rapidly kept offering money to the fans watching that bought his merch. Doing the same sketchy bullshit infomercials at 5 a.m. do, saying if you buy this shirt within five minutes, you'll get a chance to win a thousand dollars. Then 30 seconds later going, well actually if you buy my hoodie and Tyson T-Rex underwear for 
your kid, you'll be able to win $2,000. Just switching the initial prize money around, screwing over the last wave of people that bought something in hopes of winning, constantly switching around the regulations and rules, which is definitely borderline illegal. Mr. Beast kept giving the impression they were just throwing money away, flushing it down the drain for everybody to take. So much, in fact, he wasn't even going to make a profit off this merch madness. Despite, in reality, it was revealed Mr. Beast walked away with millions in his pocket, deceiving everybody once again for being this angelic soul that's doing it all out of generosity. Then we will sign that shirt, and some of them will get random prizes like this. 46 illegal lotteries. These lotteries are also run poorly multiple times. They would say something like, buy in the next five minutes for a chance to win, and then seven minutes later go, actually, the newest order in 30 seconds is gonna win. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Hey, Daryl, don't we owe someone $1,000? We do. Yeah, so, all right, so the newest order in 30 seconds, we are gonna put $1,000 in your package. We're gonna break neutral. When there was just no way they were ever even close to losing money on this stream. In five hours, they gave away about $50,000 worth of stuff uh, and sold over 50,000 t-shirts. Selling these t-shirts at $42 each, profit margin would be about $22. But even if they were making like $1 per shirt, they would still be fine. Uh, also, by my estimates, only one in every 1,600 orders actually won a prize. And I guarantee he has real-time analytics on his laptop. He knows they make more money every time he says, Oh my God, guys, we're giving away so much stuff. We're not even going to make a profit. This is sort of a complicated topic because Mr. Beast has done a lot of good to this world over his run, like curing blind people, planting millions of trees, cleaning up the oceans, giving away millions to actual charities and people in need. So it's really got me scratching my nuts in confusion on why he still feels the need to pull petty scams like this to his audience. Considering this man is an infinite money glitch, he sleeps with the IV a liquid gold attached to him every single night, so he's quite the opposite of being broke. We know his videos require millions of dollars to be poured into them because of the insane production costs, but it's impossible for him not to make a profit since you guys got to remember, YouTube is far from the only source of income Mr. Beast has. Because he has million dollar sponsors every vid, his own food chain and chocolate bars sold in Walmart, countless investments probably, so dude is completely loaded, making the motive have to be Mr. Beast's own personal greed, which is messed up in all types of ways to the poor kids who bought into the scam. Sadly, that's not the only way people got scammed though, as another promise from his merch stream was for every shirt that was sold to be signed personally with Mr. Beast's very own hand. Something that's pretty exciting for a lot of people, especially kids out there that can own something with the most famous YouTuber signature on it. Well, on that very same stream, employees were caught completely forging Mr. Beast's signature, copying the initials he used live in front of thousands of people to see, doing a terrible job of covering the mistake up. Here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not, maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs M.B., which is Mr. B's signature. Then he covers it, signs his own initials, TC, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Could you make it any more obvious? You know, you don't accidentally have someone else's signature as muscle memory. Hey! MB, Mr. Beast. So this is Mr. Beast's signature. No way, this one was signed by Mr. Beast. It's just got the MB, but it, that means it's signed by Mr. Beast. That's obviously his. Mr. Beast, this is so cool. Even Tariq notices Tyler slip up and immediately looks into the camera, looks guilty. I'm surprised nobody in the live stream was able to catch anything at the time or bring this to light right when this happened, because I think even if this guy stood up and flopped a sack on the table, that would be less noticeable than whatever the hell that attempt of hiding it was. He would also do very shady giveaways on a regular basis, like if you subscribe right now, you'll be able to win a brand new iPhone, and your parents will repeal their divorce. So over the next seven days, I'm going to be giving a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S24. How is this legal? I don't get it. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel. All you have to do to enter to win one of these phones is subscribe. Once you start to grow up, you really start to feel stupid for falling for this kind of stuff as a kid because realistically, how in the flying fuck would the average YouTube subscriber get contacted in the first place? I'm a YouTuber, so of course I'll have my other socials linked to my channel, which you should go follow. Birthday posts on Insta dropping soon. But to you guys or the average viewer in general, nobody has contact links in their goddamn bio. It's a private account you just use for what YouTube is used for, watching videos. XXBeastGod6 62 isn't gonna have his goddamn Twitter link to his profile because he's an 11 year old watching this on his mother's iPad. It's very hard to source this as legitimate. Now, I'll be fair and say when I did search on Twitter for Mr. Beast giveaway winners, there were countless results, but none of them tied to them getting a prize for just being a subscriber. It was a very other well known challenge that they won. I think we've climbed up the mountain of broken dreams and heavy despair Mr. Beast has built up over the years, so let's get to the peak. Jimmy would release his biggest competition yet, airing on Amazon Prime called Beast Games, where over a thousand people will compete for a while 
whopping $5 million. This allegedly got out of control very fast, with multiple people, including women, getting beat up and assaulted by men. People with disabilities were denied medication because it somehow was seen as cheating. That makes perfect sense. Yep, take the inhaler from the kid with asthma. His breathing is an advantage. Starving people for 12 hours at a time and serving them prison food. Basically, the story sounds like a modern-day internment camp. The inspiration for this challenge was yet again Squid Game's base, but I guess Mr. Beast really took the show to heart because he managed to almost recreate the night fight that happened in the show in real life. Obviously, nobody died from this, but many people would be physically and mentally damaged from the challenge. One woman who would be the first of dozens would come forward to share her haunting experience being part of the game. They eliminated 400 people the first day. Those 400 people, the majority of them were forced by the other team members to be on the specific team they were. Some were just about like physically like assaulted to be put onto one team, which ended up making it like the weakest team. Of the 400 people that left, the majority of them, I'd say at least half, are all extremely depressed. Like Mr. Beast is a monster and the games that he does are really cruel and sick. I mean, there are a lot of updates that I'm gonna give. I made a video last night when I was, I was prepared and planning on off last night. It was supposed to be a thousand dollars um, that's like nothing. Four months. It was, it was going to take four months to get to me. As Mr. Beast and his staff knew that I was homeless and had nothing when I went on the show. And I had to buy stuff for wardrobe to be on the show. Many people, sometimes they, they hadn't gotten their medication for like two days. Some of it was like epileptic medication, like really vital, necessary medication. Now, of course, this could all be easily blown out of proportion or in this scenario, upplayed instead of downplayed. I don't even think upplayed is a word. But you guys get the gist. This could all be a fairy fantasy, but when dozens of other people are coming out with the exact same story, it gives a good reason to make this slightly more believable. The homeless thing and her wanting to unalive herself could just be used to touch and fiddle her heartstrings, or she's telling the truth, and this is another reason to see Mr. Beast as scummy. Because why are you posting yourself giving homeless people houses or tons of money, and then the next day he treats them hoes like human lab rats. When all that gets taken into consideration, it really doesn't add up to the golden boy Mr. Beast character everyone is familiar with. As I mentioned, this woman would be far from the only person to come forward because dozens more would reach out to the YouTuber we talked about previously, Rosanna Pansino, to help share their own nightmarish encounter they had at Beast Games for the entire world to see. Many of which perfectly lined up with the story the first woman told, or at least having a lot of similar details. I wanted to keep you guys updated on what I've been hearing about Mr. Beast Beast Games since I posted my video yesterday. I have pretty much been talking with more people involved with the show all day. At this point, I've lost track, but I think it's nearing like 100 people who have reached out to me with their stories. Each person has their own experience and their own opinions, but overall, the stories that I'm hearing just break my heart. I have never heard of anything like this on any set. So today, I want to read a statement from another contestant who shares many of the same experiences with the other stories that I'm hearing. For whoever wants to pause and read the whole story, because I'm about to drop a Netflix original if I start narrating this entire thing. But I want to repeat, this is only alleged still. Jimmy has not yet made a response with evidence to confirm this to be fake. The story says they were offered hush money, but instantly denied it. Supported the first girl's story about people having seizures, going on to say all of it was rigged and unfair from the start, having most games be about strength and power, where young athletic men would start beating up the woman. Blood, sweat, and titties rained across the battlefield until the chaos calmed down, which allegedly led two girls to be passed out that Mr. Beast dragged off the set, and multiple people with broken bones that were mostly women. I mean, the accuracy to the actual show is remarkable. I wouldn't be surprised if Chandler was stroking Jimmy's Beast with the lion mask on to recreate the VIPs, too. Just how did he let the situation get this out of control and expect people not to speak up about it? She goes on to say, and I'll read some of it now, we were given 400 calories a meal and fed every 12 hours. Food would run out and people would fight over, steal, and hoard food. Water was scarce and kept running out as well. I had to sit with a bloody pad for two days before I could get undergarments and my reusable ones because I'm allergic to regular pads. She goes on with more horrible conditions but then says, they offered anyone who lost $1,000 to sign away their rights to join any kind of class action lawsuit of any kind. Yeah, that right there would have had me walking the hell out because that entire concept alone just sounds sketchy. There's more to the story. You guys can pause and read, but Mr. Beast apparently knew he screwed up by offering their very own therapy session for her. Then then she went on to say all the nurses in a hospital near the Mr. Beast challenge reported many injured people rushing in from the event. And since the nurses had no affiliation, none of them were required to sign an NDA agreement. Obviously, this is the most damning thing to confirm everybody's story because these are the only people Mr. Beast couldn't possibly silence. And if they're corroborating everyone's story, it makes it a lot more believable. This was something too large for Mr. Beast to handle by inviting over a thousand people and didn't take into consideration how psychotic people will get over a cash prize of that level. The medication stuff still doesn't add up to 
to me at all. I have no idea why that was even a rule to begin with. Maybe he was trying to get rid of more people and wanted the depressed people to eliminate themselves. Who knows? But I think it's still terrible no matter what lens you look at it because if you're going to scale your projects by a whole tenfold, you got to amp up the security and medical team and all that as well. It just seems like this entire event was completely understaffed and handled poorly, which if all this is true, I think Mr. Beast needs to make an apology directly to them or publicly because they went in thinking it was a fun little game show and left with broken bones and stitches. There's another contestant sharing their story. Not even going to read it out loud at all, but if you guys once again want to stop and read, feel free to do so. Lastly, Dog Pack would cover the Feastables Bar, Mr. Beast markets over other brands for being a healthy alternative, when they're actually the same, if not worse, than the popular chocolate you would already buy. Now in 2024, Mr. Beast changed the formula again to where it has mostly the same ingredients as Hershey's and even more sugar and more calories per bar. And this initial ad for Feastables where he calls it healthy is still getting millions of views a month. Also, I don't think you should ever advertise it as over a million dollars in prizes when more than a third of those prizes are just coupons for more Mr. Beast products. I really hate to break your hopes up. Treat them big backs to a salad. I'm sorry, chocolate ain't ever gonna be the fix. Realistically though, it is screwed because diabetic people could buy this product thinking it's healthier for them when in reality it's only worse. And that can cause a lot of complications and drama. So it's nothing short of a miracle to this day that Mr. Beast hasn't been sued. Someone who is, or at least getting threatened to be, is Dog Pack himself, getting sent a cease and desist letter from the Mr. Beast team. Dear Dog Pack, Satan represents your former employee, Mr. Beast YouTube LLC. I am writing you regarding your recent troubling conduct following your involuntary termination from employment with the company on April 19th, 2024. Specifically, it has recently come to the company's attention that you have been, among other things, disclosing sensitive, confidential, and proprietary information regarding the company's business operations and content creation methodology and breach of your legal obligations to the company, including the contractual post-employment obligations set forth in the confidentiality and NDA executed by you in connection with your employment. Why the hell can adults just talk normally? Like, there's no reason we gotta be this formal. So Mr. Beast is raising his NDA up high above Dog Pack, trying to silence him for exposing more information. The only thing is an NDA, which is basically an agreement people have to not share any inner workings of a company. However, that only really applies to operations that are legal, because NDAs can't possibly prevent people reporting criminal activities if some shady activities are happening. Dog Pack would respond to this basically saying he couldn't care less and will continue to expose more, which he would be hit with the second letter for this time labeling it as his final warning, which he again stood his ground to, so respect to him for not folding against a YouTube empire that's trying to silence his ass into the shadow realm. But that being said though, that's not even everything that's available to cover. If I were to touch over every intricate detail about this drama, we would be here till the fucking cows come home. Basically just an infinite universe of drama that is constantly expanding by the day with new information being dropped left and right. And as each day passes, the chance of Mr. Beast recovering from it just keeps getting slimmer. With that being said though, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to slap a like before your dad slaps you. Subscribe to hit my vibe and as always follow my other socials that are linked in the description like i said i'll try to get in a birthday post this week so make sure y'all run my instagram up i think a part two will be made once more about this story develops or mr beast directly makes a response but i'll catch you all again this week we staying consistent for bridge season out here i right, i'm gonna head out this bitch